can start again with your name and what you do. Uh-huh. I'm Caroline Poli, and I'm the supervisor here at Matinicus Rock. And this is my third year working with Project Puffin as supervisor on this island, and I love it. My name's Annie Roan. Last year I was a rotating intern, but I actually spent most of my time here on Matinicus Rock. Last year I was on the island for 78 days, and they were consecutive. My name is Bethany Baldwin and I work at a zoo in Connecticut. I really don't have a background with Project Puffin. I just learned about it when I went on a hardy boat tour when I was 12 years old with my mom. And when I learned that there were biologists that live on these islands and get to see puffins up close all the time, I thought I really wanted to do that. You know, it's like a life goal that I finally achieved. To get there, you have to drive to Rockland and take a ferry which takes about an hour and 15 minutes, and that takes you to Vinyl Haven. And then our friend John picks us up in his little boat and takes us to the Matinicus Rock, which takes another hour and 15 minutes or hour and a half. Ooh, doesn't this smell nice and fishy? So it's a long trip, but it's totally worth it. And when I saw the island, I really was so happy because there's puffins everywhere. As soon as you get there, you can see them everywhere and lots of other birds that I didn't even know what they were. So I became very familiar with them after that. <laughs> it was really dangerous out here back in the day and um, a lot of ships would crash on the rocks or they could kind of just, you know, not see the island. And so this foghorn was installed. I thought it was going to be really hard and I was kind of worried, but it turns out that you can get used to a horn going off really loudly every 15 seconds. See, just like that. We are literally living in the colony. Um, when we step out that door, we have turns flying around us. As soon as we step off the path, we run the risk of stepping on eggs. Uh, you know, there are lots of hazards of walking around the island. The species that we focus on most are razorbills, uh, Atlantic puffin, and common and arctic terns. And those species are pretty cool. We try to collect productivity information for them, which is how many chicks each species produces on average per year. And then we also collect diet information for all three of those species. So what sort of fish are they bringing in? How big are the fish? Um, and how many fish are they feeding per hour or per chick? Uh, what chick is getting it? And those kind of questions are really cool to answer. Some of it's basic monitoring and some of it's more advanced science. There's never a dull moment. We're always running around, doing puffin checks, yeah. doing turn stuff. Um, it's just, you never know what's gonna happen because you'll be walking around and be like, oh my God, here's the first turn chick. Um, and you'll get to, you know, take a moment and appreciate it and really get to know those animals and for feeding studies, which we do from the porch sometimes. Uh, you really care about those chicks and you're always rooting for them. And then I actually really like the education aspect of this whole job. I like having people come to me that are new and it's really cool to see someone who's got this great interest in birds but doesn't really know how to harness it and to take them and teach them like, this is what we do and this is how we study things. Wing cord is 92. It's fun to watch them sort of get it and to really get into it. You really are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And just having that ability to, you know, take some time for yourself and enjoy your surroundings is really important on a job like this. I think sometimes it can get lonely for people being away from family, just like any other project, um, but we have five people living on the island and they really become kind of your second family. You have lots of fun, we make up holidays, we play board games, you know, sit around and talk, do little arts and crafts projects when the weather is bad. And you learn to have fun, you learn about each other, and we have people from all over the world coming to Project Puffin. It's really cool to hear their stories and their experiences. It's kind of, it's fun to be disconnected, honestly. But you can't expect a shower. Um, you can expect shower in a bag, or you can expect to shower down at the water. 
Or you can stick your head in a bucket and wash your hair that way. This is pumping water out of our cistern that we use for washing our face and hands and doing dishes. It's not for drinking. As you can see there's a bug floating in it. Things go bad really quickly out here because we don't really have a refrigerator. Um, we have this little box that's about you know, a foot and a half by a foot and a half inside and we can fit two gallons of milk. But it also runs off of propane um, and that's wasteful and it takes resources. Often there's no space in the fridge and so things that kind of don't really need refrigeration end up kicked out. A lot of what we eat is dictated by which vegetables are about to go bad or like Oh, this cheese is, you know, kind of on its way out. Like, we have to eat this, so let's have mac and cheese with, like, real cheese. But people go to great lengths to cook amazing meals, and it's so wonderful. <laughs> this is our oven. It's really great. I think there's something in it. It's a giant cookie. Wow. That's how you keep a crew happy. I'm happy! <laughs> and I'm not trying to be isolated from the real world, but this is a different kind of life, and it happens at a different pace. And um, I, I kind of like it, honestly. Now that I've been here for close to six months, I can say I, I really missed it when I left last year. And having all the photos and keeping in contact with a lot of people was so amazing. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons I wanted to come back was it, it felt like home. <laughs> and it's weird to be away from home. And if you think about the state of puffins 30 years ago or so, and there weren't any really, and then this project brought them back, you know, and that's really, really cool. And then to keep at it all these years and keep reciting birds and keep studying them and putting geolocators on them to see what they're doing when they're out to sea, this is just amazing how much dedication everyone has here.